Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about the P, Q, R, S and T waves on an ECG. These are the waves you'll commonly see on a normal ECG recording. So for this tutorial it's important you have an understanding of how an ECG works. See the previous tutorial on ECG first principles if you need more information. So we're going to have a look at how a heart goes through its sequence of depolarization and repolarization. And we're going to trace this out on an ECG bit by bit. But first of all, here are the definitions of the waves which we will be talking about. The P wave occurs during atrial depolarization. The Q wave is a downward wave which follows a P wave. The R wave is an upward wave which follows a P wave. The S wave is a downward wave which follows an R wave. And the QR and S waves are associated with ventricular depolarization. And finally, the T wave is associated with ventricular repolarization. So we're going to have a look at an ECG trace from lead 2. Remember that lead 2 looks at the heart from this direction. So it will see depolarization or repolarization that occurs towards or away from it. So the first thing to happen to the heart is that the SA node triggers atrial depolarization. And this occurs in this direction towards lead 2. So we will see an upward deflection on the ECG like this. This is followed by septal depolarization. Because the left bundle branch is activated before the right bundle branch, depolarization occurs in this direction, which is slightly away from the direction of lead 2. This causes a small downward deflection on the ECG trace. This is followed soon after by ventricular depolarization which occurs toward lead 2. And this is a very large electrical event. This is seen on the ECG as a large upward deflection. Atrial repolarization occurs about this time, but is overshadowed by the large amount of electrical activity occurring in the ventricles. Finally, ventricular repolarization occurs. This occurs in the opposite direction to ventricular depolarization, but because it is repolarization rather than depolarization, an upward deflection is seen on the ECG trace. You can think about this as a double negative. Despite the wave of repolarization moving away from lead 2, because it is repolarization, it has the opposite effect to depolarization. Now let's label the waves on this ECG trace. This first wave was associated with atrial depolarization. Therefore, it's a P wave. This next wave is a downward wave after a P wave. Therefore, it's a Q wave. This next wave is upward, and it's also after the P wave. So it's an R wave. There's no S wave here, so we don't need to label one. In lead AVR, you would see an R wave and an S wave, but no Q wave. Have a think about why this is. If you understand this, then you are well on your way to understanding an ECG. Finally, there is a wave associated with ventricular repolarization. This is a T wave. Now because the QR and S waves are associated with ventricular depolarization, 
We usually refer to them as the QRS complex, regardless of whether all three waves are present or not. So I'll just write down here QRS complex ventricular depolarization. And that's an overview of the waves of a normal ECG. For more free tutorials and the PDF for this tutorial, visit www.handwrittentutorials.com.